Kathleen Smith, who will introduce our speaker this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Glad to have you all here. I see a lot of familiar faces, and I hope you're enjoying your meal. And uh, we'll proceed while uh, you proceed uh, with your eating. Uh, my job is to introduce the speaker. I would like to briefly make reference to why we're here. This is Ag Appreciation Night, and every year we get the opportunity to express our appreciation for people that are related to the farm and ranch industry in this area. We're not only appreciative uh, because of the economic impact that uh, we have already heard about, we're particularly appreciative of what the farm and ranch culture brings to all of us in this area. Uh, you could hardly find, in fact, that you probably can't find any significant business or organization in Aberdeen that isn't populated to a great degree with people who grew up on farms and ranches and brought the lessons that they learned, uh, their work ethic, and all of the good things you learn on farm and ranches they bring in when they take jobs here in the city. So as a city, we always have to think about the effect we're going to have on the ag industry, the ag community, and ag people, ag retailers, whenever we do anything. We have to always keep it in mind, and so this ag appreciation event is a good opportunity to remind us of that. We especially have to always take into consideration that what we do necessarily has to think about improving the economic and all of the vitality of area towns, not just Aberdeen. It's the Aberdeen Area Chamber of Commerce, and everything we do in Aberdeen should always be thinking about what is this going to do to make the towns surrounding us better, because there's Nothing that happens in Aberdeen that is any more important to the overall quality of life in Aberdeen compared to anything that happens in any of the towns around us. We're all in this together. And this Ag Banquet is a, is a good opportunity for us to recognize that. And so I thank all of you who are the producers who are here and all of you who are in the, uh, the other areas that serve them. My job here is to uh, introduce Brian Sanderson, and I've had the chance to meet him and an enjoyable evening with him here so far. Brian is a uh, native of uh, Lake Norton and went to South Dakota State University, and then had a very extensive uh, business experience working for Cargill and other companies, doing a lot of things for a lot of time, and then decided to settle back here in South Dakota when he had the opportunity to work with the Department of Agriculture. And as mayor of the city of Aberdeen, we know how important the Department of Agriculture is when we have ag businesses and industries come to Aberdeen. They don't happen by themselves. And the Dugard administration has been very helpful for us in the eight years he's been governor. I've been mayor for all those eight years. And when we're going to work trying to get somebody to come here to Aberdeen or the surrounding areas, there's no politics. There's just an effort to do what's right. And uh, I will personally miss Governor Dugard uh, for the uh, time that he's been there for eight years. And Mr. Sanderson has been a part of his administration. And uh, the Ag Department that he's worked with has been very valuable to us. And a lot of the good things you see happening have gone through that department. So with that, I will bring him up. I, I, uh, I told Brian to uh, limit it to an hour. I thought that would be about what you were, you were here for. So, uh, Brian, glad to have you here, and uh, welcome to Aberdeen and to our Ag Thank you. Thank you for the kind introduction. Um, I appreciate the opportunity uh, to actually get the invite to come and speak, and I didn't know what to expect. My secretary said you were chosen to go to the Aberdeen Ag Chamber Banquet. It's on your calendar. You have to get there by 6 o'clock. I was like, how many people are they expecting? She said, I don't know. Some are between 20 and 40. <laughs> and like the mayor said, he told me to limit it to an hour. I've 
been busy cutting slides out of my PowerPoint. It started as 100. I think we're down to about 97 or 96. <laughs> so you'll have to bear with me just a little bit. I usually don't get the opportunity or don't get asked to do this very often. And there probably is a good reason for that. So again, bear with me for the next eight to 10 minutes. Again, my name is Brian Sanderson. I'm the Director of Ag Development for the state of South Dakota. The Department of Ag is split into five divisions. I get to lead a small team of seven of us total, again, the Ag Development Division. Currently, we have offices in Rapid City, Pierre, and Sioux Falls, and collectively as a group, we don't touch every Ag Development project that happens in the state, but for a small team, touch a lot of them. Currently, our small team is working on roughly $308 million worth of CapEx projects in South Dakota. Everything from $20,000 projects up to a couple hundred million dollar processing plans and about everything in between. When my secretary told me I was coming to speak, I prepped a little more for the producers in the room than the business people. And so, uh, again, you'll have to bear with me for that a little bit too. I came to the department November 9th of last year, was asked by the Secretary of Ag to come and take this job. At that time, it was Secretary Mike Jaspers. And since then, I've traveled about every corner. I think my state car, I put 34, 35,000 miles on it in the last year. And as I travel and talk to producers, I'm yet to meet a single producer that has not been impacted by the calendar year 2018. Everything from the cow-calf guy battling blizzards last spring. I currently uh, partner on some cows. Uh, I feed some cattle myself. I'm tied very heavy to production ag and talking to the feedlot guys who battled February, March, and April, I feel your pain. You looked at late planting. You look at where I live, I live just south of Mitchell. There's still probably 30% of the crop in the field. It's super wet. The guys are a little nervous right now. They're hoping that we don't get that five to 12 inches of snow, you know, that they're predicting so guys can get finished. This cold weather as of late, uh, honestly is really not good. But with the trying times, with the troubles that are happening in agriculture, there's still opportunities all over the place. We just have to be in a position to capitalize on them. As I talk to producers, the opportunity for them now is to get a hold of their business, truly understand your business, understand your cost of production, understand your anticipated yields, and be able to pull the trigger when that happens. Ag development, a lot of our goal it is to help bring the next generation back. That's what our finance programs do. That is what we spend a lot of time doing, is trying to get the new guy, the, the kids that just graduated college, how do we get them back? And the hard part, <coughs> Right now, the opportunity to do that doesn't look the same as it did in the past. 20 years ago, the farm grew, I hate to say it, because of the demise of your neighbor. Your neighbor retired, your neighbor got out, suddenly you took over and started farming their ground. And as we look at the opportunity now, it's on the livestock side to add value to what you already produce, to become more efficient on your own operations, Get efficient with what you already have. And with that, a lot of what we spend our time on is actually livestock development projects, helping them get permitted. And we really, really need to embrace modern livestock production. As we look, in South Dakota, we raised roughly 800 million bushels of corn. <laughs> Ethanol production takes up 400 million of that. So there's 400 million bushels left out there. Currently, livestock in South Dakota uses roughly 100 million of that remaining four. There's 300 million bushels of free corn on the market. If we didn't have livestock, what would the prices for corn look like if we put another 100 million out there? Would it be 10% worse? 
what is it, 20, 25? If you start looking at basis levels in areas where there's high demand for grain. I spent a lot of time in my past life in Northwest Iowa. If you haven't been there, it is definitely something to go see. Sioux County, Iowa, Northwest Iowa, is the highest concentrated livestock county in the entire country. Their current basis is about a 25 under when I looked. 40 cents better, I think. Um, talking to my brother, one of my brothers actually manages the Millet uh, shuttle loading facility for Agtegra, and I was talking to him about basis a little bit, and he said the current basis there was about 60 under, 65 under. Corn in high demand areas is 40 cents a bushel better. When we start looking at what livestock does for the state, for the average producer, even if it, we didn't have livestock, corn went down 10% less, that's almost $50, bush or $50 per acre that the row crop farmer gets because of livestock in the state. With livestock though, comes the ancillary jobs, comes the welders, comes the electricians, comes the plumbers, comes the HVAC people. And those jobs help revitalize rural communities that help maintain Main Street. I was actually down in, um, took my team down to Sioux County and actually went to Sioux Center and was talking to the head of the economic development there. And he was throwing out some interesting facts that Sioux County, Iowa, not that South Dakota needs to be that, for the largest livestock producing county in the Memphis, um, country, that is the second highest growth for people under 30. Sioux County, Iowa is the second highest growth for people under 30 in the state of Iowa, only behind, I think it's Polk County that has Des Moines in it. And Sioux Center looked at, um, they set up a grant, actually, for high school graduates from Sioux Center who left and went and got a college degree. They could come back, apply for this grant. It was $6,000 of free money paid back, I think it was over four years, so they get $1,500 of free money paid against student loans to come back and bring something back to the rural community that it was Sioux Center. And so with that, I don't know if my 97 slides or 98 slides are done yet. But again, Ag Development, our small team, is working on a little over $300 million worth of projects. But we look across about all the other projects that we see that are benefiting Ag in South Dakota. We have the year AGP bean plant that's coming here. Demcoda, the packing plant that is here, is up and running well. AgriPure in Lake Norton is a $250 million expansion. Suddenly that cheese plant is going to be the largest cheese plant in the upper Midwest, I think the fifth largest in the entire country. They will be processing 9.4 million pounds of milk every day. And from the economic development standpoint, we look at the impact, economic impact of livestock as a whole. And the mayor mentioned Dennis Dugard, and it started actually a little before his administration back with my grounds. They, they targeted dairy specifically, because when they looked at the economic impact of one dairy cow in South Dakota, if you control the processing, you control the cows, you control the jobs, each cow is worth almost $30,000 of economic impact to the state. This $250 million expansion just at AgriPure, when they look at needing an additional 85,000 dairy cows, is gonna be worth 2.1 billion to the bottom line of South Dakota. After that, if you look at the Seaboard Triumph plant that was just built in Sioux City, their capacity is going to be almost 20,000 head a day. That is having a positive impact uh, on the swine growth and opportunities in South Dakota. With that, there are opportunities that exist for any young beginning farmer that looking to get started. Call our department, we're willing to help. There are options out there. We do have some financing available. Would love to walk you through that. We need to embrace livestock production, especially modern livestock production, and the impact that it has total, especially for rural communities. 
And for the producers in this room, the opportunity is to manage your business. Production and agriculture is a business that generates livestock. With that, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. If you guys want to have any questions, want to catch me afterward, I'll be around for a while. Thank you. absolutely an honor to be here tonight. I'll pull it back a little bit. Um, yes, my name is Lance Philhauer. I'm one of the ag business bankers at Plains Commerce Bank. It's a privilege to be here. Um, before we get into the start of everything tonight, um, did you guys hear about this? This is, I swear to God, this is a true story. Only in Lena, we're up on County Road 14 going north of RDO. Or north of New Holland, a little bit east and north of Titan. Maybe six, seven miles east and north of Arts Equipment. We've got them all covered. <clears throat> On the way up there, all of a sudden, a county patrolman goes flying up to Ole. Turns on his flashers, pulls him over, stops him. And he says, Ole, do you realize that your wife just fell out of the car a few miles back? Ole thinks for a minute, he goes, oh. Well, thank God, I thought I went deaf five minutes ago. <laughs> Just in case you hadn't heard it, right, right north of RDO, I swear, I swear. Before I get into the main meat and potatoes of what I'm supposed to be doing up here, I'm gonna screw around for a little bit more. Right now I want, is Lisa Anderson in the room? Where is Lisa? Everybody knows Lisa. Stand up, Lisa, stand up. Where are you at? She's way over here, begins here. Lisa works for the Chamber of Commerce and she is the Ag Committee Liaison. If you know what a kindergarten teacher has to deal with, trying to control about 20, 30 kids, that's, that's Lisa for you. I mean, we've got a great bunch of volunteers, but it takes that kindergarten teacher to wrap it all together and keep us on track. So she does a fantastic job. Give her a big round of applause. Lisa. One other thing, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but little Johnny was getting pretty curious about where babies come from the other day. So he asked his mom, he said, Mom, what does the stork do after he's delivered that baby? Well, without a moment's hesitation, little Johnny's mama said, that bastard lies on the couch, drinks beer, and watches football all day. All right, we better get to business here. Being a member of the Ag Committee, I know firsthand how integral volunteers are to make the Ag Committee a success every year. They spend countless hours planning and working each one of the, each one of the events that we put on with the purpose of promoting our rural farming and ranching way of life. The Making a Difference Award began in 2007 to show appreciation to the Thayer's family who selflessly lets us hold our fourth grade ag fair at their Prairie Hill farm each year. The winner of the Making a Difference Award can be someone from the Ag Committee or someone from the community who has gone above and beyond to aid in Ag Committee projects and support of the ag industry. This year, it is a privilege of mine to present this award to two people. Good friends of mine, the mother and son duo of Peggy Bieber and Eric Payne. Let's welcome them on up here. Thank you. 
Eric and Peggy, come on up here, guys. Eric and Peggy have both been involved in agriculture as well as the Chamber of Commerce. Peggy was the chair of the Chamber Board of Directors in 2003 and keeps the Bieber, Bieber Red Angus Ranch running at top efficiency. Eric serves on the Ag Committee. He is a past Ag Committee chair and he helps out at almost every event the committee hosts. One of those events is the annual Northern Plains Livestock Show, which we hold at the fairgrounds every June. It began as a progress steer show, and over the years, it's evolved to what it looks like today. A sanctioned points show with four, count them, four different species. The person who nominated Eric and Peggy notes that there came a time when Eric stepped up to leave the show because he recognized the need for an improvement in the registration process for the show. Eric was astute enough to know just who to recruit, and that brings us to Peggy. Technology was becoming more necessary, and the system that these two developed worked together fantastic, and continues to work smoothly to this day. A big thanks to them. We also want to note that Eric continues to strive for continuity and consistency in spite of changes which are just a common way of life for the show every year. Along with that, Eric is also a consistent presence at the beef station at the fourth grade Ag Fair, another event that the, Ab the Aberdeen Area Chamber of Commerce hosts every year. One more time, big round of applause. This year's winners, Eric Payne and Peggy Beaver. Farm Family of the Year Award, and we are proud to do so. 
The purpose is to recognize a family who goes above and beyond to represent farming and ranching and the spirit of agriculture in northeastern South Dakota. To be eligible, the recipients must be actively engaged in farming or ranching with the majority of income derived from production agriculture. Our 2018 recipient is the Don and Hazel Shoneman family from rural Aberdeen. Let's give them a big round of applause. Don and Hazel moved to and rented the farm from Hazel's parents, Herman and Sophia Wendt, in 1953. Don and Hazel purchased it in 1958 from the heirs of, the ha of Hazel's parents. This farm has been in the family, the Wentz, since the late 1890s. Family members currently involved in the operation are Don and Hazel, along with Craig and Carolyn, Kirk and Kim, Chad and Misty, Emma, Sam, Kayla, Kelsey, Carly, Adrian, and Dylan. Craig began farming with Don in 1977. Kirk returned to the farm after graduating from South Dakota State University in 1983. Craig and Kirk took over the operation together in 1993 upon Don's retirement. Don and Hazel's oldest grandson, Chad, joined the operation in 1994 while attending college at Northern State University. The Shawnee Farm has always been a diversified grain and livestock operation. And like most farming operations, in the beginning, hogs were part of the livestock along with cow cattle. 60 years ago, cereal grains, spring wheat, rye, oats, barley, were a bigger part of the grain production with very little corn in the rotation. Sunflowers were also part of the rotation in the 1990s. The family also always had a combination of owned and rented land with the majority of the land owned. Current operation still remains diversified with grain and livestock. The grains have shifted to more row crops and corn and soybeans with spring wheat still in the rotation on some of the land and alfalfa utilized by their livestock. They maintain a cow-calf operation, marketing them locally. The management of the farm is maintained with Craig and Kirk. Chad is a vital part of the day-to-day -day operation, focusing more on the equipment and technology. Take care of the land and it will take care of you has always been a part of the mindset that has been instilled for generations. As technology has advanced, they have utilized management of their fields in both fertilizer application and variable rate seeding, along with management, or along with yield mapping to better utilize resources and meet yield goals. Livestock records have been maintained so the cattle herd can be age and source verified. Conservation has always been important, from the planting of shelter belts to crop rotation utilizing today's equipment that allows no till or minimum tillage. They also participate in the CSP and CRP programs. Their goal has always been to make things better today, but also enhance it for the future generations to come. Giving back and being involved has always been important. Don has served on the Northern Rural Electric Board, USDA ACS, and FMA, FMHA boards in the 1970s and 80s. Don was also active in the National Farmers Union and the National Farm Organization. Hazel was a 4-H leader for 13 years and is still a strong supporter of 4-H along with Don. Don and Hazel have always been active in their church and local organizations. Craig and Kirk have continued in this service, serving on Extension Board, Ethanol Board, Drainage Board, and Farmers Union Board. Craig also served 10 years in the South Dakota Le Legislature and recently was State Executive Director for the USDA Farm Service Agency. The next generation also has a strong commitment to agriculture participating in 4-H and Farmers Union. Please help me to congratulate Don and Hay uh, Hazel Shoneman and the rest of their family. Please uh, come up and start our work.
mirror here that's uh, engraved with Don and Hazel's name. And you can hang it up and know that every time you look in it that you are our 2018 Farm Family of the Year. Congratulations. Thank you, Samantha. Good evening, everybody. Like Sam said, I'm Ryan Strom with Farm Credit Services America here in Aberdeen. The Chamber Aid Committee works hard throughout the year to facilitate meaningful events that promote interest and understanding of agriculture while establishing a connection between the business and rural egg communities. Throughout the year, the egg com committee hosts several large events, including this one tonight. Each April, fourth grade students from area schools are invited to an egg fair held at Prairie Hill Farms. Here, they get to interact with the Groton area FFA members while learning about livestock, crops, farm safety, and much more. The FFA members bring their own livestock, ATVs, educational pieces, and a positive attitude to help the children learn. On behalf of Farm Credit Services of America, we would like to present you with a check to help further the goals of your organization. Thank you for your hard work promoting and educating people about agriculture and the rural way of life. of our evening. 